So we've been spending a while taking a look at the CRT, poking and prodding, when we realized it ain't the CRT at all. It's actually the Flash Rider 2 board that's been giving us flack. And to get the Flash Rider 2 card, it's not enough just to take this off. We actually have to unhook it over here to get that card out. Okay, so this is the part of the schematic that's suspect. Here's the TTL video output, and it is not strong enough. This should be like 0 to 5 volts or, you know, something close to 5 volts, 4 something volts. And right now it's outputting, quote unquote, true at around 120 millivolts, something like that. So let's see, there's a couple of inverters here in parallel. That's interesting. So that's maybe so that it could sink or source more current, perhaps. Anyway, let's see. It looks like there's a pull-up resistor here to this 5-volt supply. So maybe this is an open collector output. So this chip and this resistor and maybe that voltage source are suspect. So U10 is a 7406. So that's right here. And up here is R1, so we'll check to make sure one of these is getting five volts. So we found the data sheet here. What the heck is A and Y supposed to be? Um, A is for A input and Y is for Y output. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> anyway, the main thing that I wanted to check and that is true is that this has open collector outputs and it's for high voltage but it's not really high voltage here all right let's poke about with the multimeter okay so r1 and r2 are both 150 ohm and r1 reads go to second to stabilize 76.3 and r2 reads give it a second there we are, 77 point something. Okay. Oh, 76.2. So I'm also going to reverse the measurement just to make sure we're not turning on any uh, transistors. Yep, okay, that was for R2, and here's the reverse measurement on R1. Yeah, same okay. thing. So remember that these are being measured in circuit. If I were to take these out, they would probably each measure 150 ohm. And what we're measuring is this resistor in parallel with whatever else. So to understand that further, we would need to look at the schematic. But really, I want to make sure that things are connecting. So R1 is a pull-up resistor hooked to VCC. So let me find some VCCs to make sure we have continuity. Okay, so that's hooked to VCC. And this should also then be the output, just one of these. It's that one. Okay, so it looks like... That's TTL, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that should be our TTL output. So it looks like the structure for the pull-up resistor is okay. But if this chip was bad, then I would expect it to actually have an easier time. It should just, it should just get stuck at plus 5 volts. Huh. So I want to see if this chip is getting a correct signal going into it. Okay, so we double checked that we had nice sync signals here, but our TTL output here is quite anemic. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to measure the voltage here at R1, which is our pull-up resistor. So let's put this on voltage. So this is the pull-up resistor for the TTL output. I want to make sure we're getting five volts on one of these sides. And that's a good solid five volts, okay? Okay, everybody explained that this is acting like an antenna, but it's making it easy to reach right now. So I'm going to measure our anemic output here at the resistor. So U10, this chip here, is the open collector inverter. That's the output. I want to make sure it's getting, first of all, getting a proper input. So let's see. So if this is pin one up here, we need to go look at the pinouts on the schematic and figure out what pin to look at. We're gonna go ahead and look at pin nine also. This is all complicated having to do with the composite output, but mostly I wanna check pins one and three, which are the input to these inverters. 
Okay, so now we can get something of a stable looking TTL output because I followed everyone's suggestion and went and got a second scope probe. So we're actually triggering off of the vertical sync pulse and then we're looking, which actually the vertical sync pulse is down here. Um, and then we're looking at the pulse here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at pin one of chip U10, which is the input to the inverter that creates this output. All right. Okay, so pin one, I'm actually gonna look at it over here. Oh, is it supposed to look like that? Whoop. Ah, there we go. A second, let me tweak this a bit. The other way, go the other way. Well, ain't that a kick in the head? So, and I'm having trouble uh, getting it to look stable, but the main point is this is a proper zero, one, two, three, four volts. So it's, it's like getting a proper input. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do you see it here too? Ten dual commandments. Yeah, okay. So all of the places are getting a proper TTL input signal. Well, that's good. Yeah, so the thing is, <laughs> if this chip about. was bad, I would expect that it wouldn't be able to pull things to ground and this thing would be floating high and we would get a bright screen. But maybe it has a different failure mode where it tries to pull the signal to ground when it's not supposed to, but it can't quite pull it down the whole way. Either way, this chip is suspect. And I think what I might be able to do, if it's suspect, I should be able to just remove that chip and this should float high and we should see a bright screen. Because H-Sync and V-Sync, that's created by this stuff over here. So that's not associated with U10. U10 is just creating the TTL and if you have things set right, the composite video. So I should be able to just remove that chip. As a sanity check, let me also make sure this chip is getting a proper five volt power supply. So just doing a quick sanity measure, we can see that is in fact getting five volts. Huzzah. Okay, so that, that chip is getting power. Huh, this chip is sus. Okay, so just for reference, the ribbon here is pointing out to the left from this orientation. Our entire theory was wrong. So here's the mistake that I made. Since we're using H-Sync and V-Sync, I assumed that we also needed this TTL output from the card, which I've been debugging this whole time. Uh, I should note this ground here. Don't be misled by the red. This is actually ground. This down here is actually the composite output. And that is what is actually going over there through the contrast control. Now, I don't understand this at all because this composite output, a composite signal is not a TTL signal. And I don't see how a composite signal would be strong enough to turn on the transistor that's at the input there. So, I don't know what's going on, but anyway, what I did do is I sort of hooked this up here so that I can take this and hopefully if I touch this to five volts, the screen will turn white, just so, as another way of testing the screen. And then I'll try to figure out what's going on here. So I don't understand why it's not using the actual TTL here, but obviously I don't want to go rewiring it until I really understand what's going on. Computer is on. So when my dad touches the thing to the thing, this thing should light up. Yep, there we go. Is it lighting up? Yep, it's lighting up. Ooh, that's funny. The like uh, the sync from the video is diagonal this time. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good sign that it works. That it both works and it's expecting a TT level signal. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to play with the contrast knob. Does it get dimmer? Oh, yeah, it gets dimmer and kind of glitches out. The pot's probably a bit jank, but... Yep, it definitely does get dimmer and brighter if it kind of looks like the phaser from Star Trek. Okay, so it's definitely expecting a TTL level signal, I think, which, why it makes no sense to me that it's hooked to this composite output. 
So why is it hooked this, to this composite output? Oh, what is going on here? I don't understand. Okay, I also wanted to mention that R3, this optional resistor is not present on the board. So there's nothing in for R3. So just another sanity check. This is what the composite output looks like. So it's maxing out at like around 200 millivolts. I didn't bother hooking up the, sorry, I didn't bother hooking up the sink, but you get the idea. And this is what that TTL output looks like. It's exactly the same. So it looks like in this particular configuration, it's like whatever the TTL output is, is getting mirrored at the composite output more or less or pretty close. So I'm still suspicious of that open collector because if I think about what this should be doing, now even thinking about the composite video, if there's no resistor in R5 slot, and even if I were to look at it directly at pin eight here, so I'm gonna look at it at pin eight, Let's see, let's look at pin eight. So, okay, so there's pin eight. Yeah, so if you think about what this should look like, I think this should look a lot higher than 200 millivolts. If you take a look at the schematic, if the open collector here is not connecting this thing to ground, then this thing should be floating a lot closer. <laughs> and so to get composite output, what they do is they have this divider here. So it looks like the way this is set up, it makes sense to me that you can get basically the same signal out of the TTL or the composite. Okay, so I'm back to thinking that this open collector output is suspect, that even when it's supposed to be letting this go and letting this output here float, it's still trying to pull it down at least just a little bit, which is why we're getting this kind of thing. Yeah, and yes, I know that my ground wire is too long, so I'm getting some jank, but you can see that that's not what it should be. Hi there, this is Aaron in the editing stage. As I've been editing this footage, I've been giving it some more thought, and I think I know partially what's going on. Basically, I think the Flash Rider 2 instructions are a little bit misleading. So it says here, pin 1 is composite video, and pin 3 is TTL video. And the instructions say that if you need to connect a video display requiring separate sync and video, it says to use pin 3, which is that TTL output. I'm not sure why the Vector 3 doesn't do that. The Vector 3 actually uses the pin 1 output, but it turns out this pin 1 isn't necessarily composite video. It could also be a TTL signal. If we scroll down a little bit more, it indicates that there's a series of component values to change to make that composite output work. And basically it looks like if you don't make that change, you do get a TTL signal out of pin one. So it makes sense that you could use that instead of pin three, but this is kind of confusing. So this indicates the component choices. So this is the set of choices for composite output out of pin one. And the thing I just now figured out is that this is a set of component choices for TTL output without the H-Sync and V-Sync signals, also out of pin one. Pin three is independent of this. So this scan isn't super easy to read, but it's the best one I could find online. Anyway, when you're in composite mode for the composite video output, the various resistors here are set as shown this W1 jumper isn't here, and there is a connection across this Q jumper. So the TTL video output is still there, even if you're in composite mode. It's being driven by these two open collector inverters in parallel with this R1 pull-up resistor. That's independent of the composite video circuitry here. So the video signal itself comes in and goes through this single open collector inverter here. And then that goes through this 68 ohm resistor to be mixed in with the signal from this open collector 
inverter here that has all of this V-Sync and H-Sync business. So that's how the sync signal gets mixed in. And then it goes through this voltage divider to the output because a composite video signal is not as intense as a TTL signal. Now, in the mode where you have this set for TTL output at the composite video, R5 is not present. R4 is 330 ohms instead of 100 ohms. This R68 resistor is actually just a jumper. It's a wire, and there's a wire here too. So in that particular mode, you wind up with essentially this 150 ohm resistor and this 150 ohm resistor in parallel, which is why we were reading 75 ohms earlier. And then you have three open collector inverters in parallel driving both this TTL video output directly and this composite video that goes through this 330 ohm resistor with these capacitors because remember R5 isn't there. Now, in any case, the problem that I'm having is that these various open collectors, I think, are doing something odd in that I think that they're still trying to pull the output down even when they're not supposed to. So the output here isn't getting to be as big as it needs to be. And I think that might be a problem even if only one of these three was dodgy. One of these three could be dodgy and then trying to pull things down when the other two are properly opening up, and that would still create problems. So once again, this 7406 is suspect. I am Computer Man. I have come to you to tell you that your email is full. You need to buy more storage. Oh, gross, there's a spider in here. Get.